Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. In this video, we're gonna go over the Mac OS Sonoma 14.1.1 update. We're also gonna cover a really crazy situation that happened today when users started to receive their iMac M3 and their base model 14-inch MacBook Pro. They were shipped with Mac OS Ventura 13.5, and then when they checked for updates, there was no updates available. Plus, we'll talk about the Mac OS Ventura 13.6.2 update that was non-universal, and it was split into two different versions. We're gonna cover Open Core Legacy patcher for unsupported Macs and the brand new 1.2.0 update. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the 13.6.2 Ventura update was split into two different build versions. Well, the 14.1.1 update was also split into two different versions. The 23B81 was the general release for Macs with M2 and below all the way down to Intel. 2082 was for M3 Macs only. So that's why you'll see a difference here with the build version if you install on different hardware. Now, the Ventura update is the same thing. The 13.6.2 g 2321 is for the m3 max only that were shipped with 13.5 and the 22 g 320 is for any macbook pro m1 or m2 with a pro motion display and we're going to talk about that later in a different fix for mac os monterey there was no associated 12.7.2 update it is still on the current release of 12.7.1 on the ios side we got 17.1.1 ipad os 17.1.1 audio os for home pod 17.1.1 and for watch os 10.1.1 our demonstration Mac here for the update is our MacBook Pro 13 inch M1 2020. To get the update started, all you need to do is go into system settings and you should see the update right here, software update available. Click on that and you should see 14.1.1. All you need to do is click on more info to get more information about the update. We'll click update now, agree, and our password. We'll let this finish downloading. We're gonna time how long this takes to be able to prepare and start. Okay, we are back up after the update. Let's check the build version here. And we are on 14.1.1, 23B81. Keep in mind, there was no beta version of 14.1.1, and there usually isn't for these smaller point security quick fix updates. How long did it take to install the 14.1.1 update? Well, since the update was under a gigabyte in size, it went really fast. The preparation time was only four minutes and the actual installation time was four minutes also for a total of eight minutes. And you can see the difference between the 14.1 update, which was a feature release and security release that took 21 minutes total from preparing an actual installation time. What about Safari? Safari was actually not updated. It is the same version as 14.1, but it did get an associated update for Mac OS Ventura as a standalone installer, a 17.1 v2, and that was put out on November 6th for Mac OS Ventura. Apple also released a full installer package for both the 23B2082 and the 23B81 full installers. And I put the different note on here to make sure that you download the right one. Don't download this if you don't have an M3. This is the general package for all Macs M2 and under. If you have an Apple Silicon Mac, you can get the brand new IPSW. And I also put the two different versions on here, M3 only and 14.1.1 for M2 and below. What about the M1 firmware or the Apple Silicon firmware? It was not updated. We're starting to see a trend here and nothing is getting updated. But keep in mind, this is why I track this stuff to show what has been updated and what hasn't. And the same thing with the bootloader. The bootloader is the same as the 14.1 update. Now, if you have a T2 Mac, you also did not get an associated Bridge OS update. It is the same as 14.1. So what the heck is new in the Sonoma 14.1.1 update? Well, bug fixes and security updates. I mean, this is not the first time we've seen this before. There's just nothing out there that helps explain what's in here. The problem is that it says that security updates were on there, but when we go to the Apple security update page, it says that this update has no published CVE entries. Now that's not to say that Apple might add some later. Sometimes that happens. 
this is what it's looking like right now. There's nothing there. What we do have to go by is the enterprise notes for Mac OS Ventura. So let's take a look at this real quick. 13.6.2, MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch computers with Apple Silicon no longer start up to a black screen or a circle exclamation point after the built-in display's default refresh rate has changed. Now, if you watched the previous video, I covered this and that's the 60 Hertz issue. And what that means is if on a Mac M1 or M2 with a ProMotion 120 Hertz display, if you set it to 60 Hertz and install a 13.6.1 or 13.6 update, it will black screen and you'll have to recover with Apple Configurator 2. And it even happened when you tried to boot to recovery with 60 Hertz. It would also go to black screen. This was a major issue. Now, what we're thinking is, is that part of this fix was is that the recovery system on these systems was macOS Sonoma, it was updated. And when that happened, there was problems. So the idea here is that we think that the associated Sonoma update is also fixing some of those recovery fixes, and that would make sense. But that's all we have to go on right now. This is the section where I cover the security updates, but there is no security updates as of this taping. If there is, I'll make an update to this video. That's what we're looking at right now. Now let's talk about that crazy situation with the new M3 iMac and the base model M3 14-inch MacBook Pro. These models are actually produced earlier this year. And what was found by Aaron was that these Macs were sent out with Mac OS Ventura 13.5. And that puts it in around early August time frame. So they put that build on here and it's almost looking like these models were supposed to be shipped in, in spring or summer. And then we would get M3 Pro and M3 Max now, and then maybe M3 Ultra in the early next year. And the operating system was loaded on there and they were all boxed up and, and ready to go. And that's why we were all surprised when they started to hit uh, users and they had 13.5 on there. I mean, this is pretty unprecedented when you think about it because Apple always says you can only run the latest operating system on the newest hardware. Well, here we go. You can run Mac OS Ventura now 13.6.1 as a fresh install on those three model Macs, which is just really interesting to me. That was something that we were all looking at today. Nicholas and Dina Kay, the co-developer of OpenCore Legacy Patch, who is an expert in looking at the software update server and Palace, which basically is the system used to be able to display updates for Mac. So that was really fun to do that today. Now, what about OpenCore Legacy Patcher? Well, you've seen that I've covered the some of the issues that 14.1 caused for some of the unsupported Mac users. The developers immediately started work on 1.2.0 and released this two days ago to be able to fix some of those issues. And that's why I wanted to at least talk about that now. I started filming on the 1.2.0 issue and doing a ton of testing. And of course the Sonoma update comes out and I got to cover that, but I'm still going to go back and hopefully release that video for the 1.2.0. And if it works okay, plus adding in 14.1.1, probably tomorrow and be able to cover all the new changes and features and the black screen issue. But I wanted to at least go over some base pieces here with some of the demonstration max. So what we have here to be able to show off the 14.1.1 update is our non-metal 17 inch MacBook Pro running OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1.2.0. I know a lot of you were wondering, well, is this working okay with the latest update and is it ca still causing the black screen issue? And the answer is no. The, good, the new system that's put in here that was created by McCola and the developers fixes that issue. And again, is complex in the fact of the things that it does in the background but when you look at it in the way that it works it's a really wonderful way on how it protects the system and makes sure the kernel development kit and the extensions are cleared out before the update is started and when it comes back up it has a copy of the kdk so it can install those drivers and it doesn't need internet access anymore again i'm going to cover that in the update video but this 17 inch non-metal mac is working a-ok -okay on wi-fi all my updates will be over wi-fi now to make sure that everything runs okay Okay. and this thing's running great. There's no Windows server crashes, the Bluetooth is working, Wi-Fi, everything's sound.
sound is looking really good on this non-metal Mac. Now let's take a look at our metal supported Mac mini late 2012 and we are looking good on this guy and we are on 1.2.0 and this has got a metal GPU, one of the first Macs with a metal GPU. We've got our Bluetooth, we got our Wi-Fi, everything's running very well, no issues at all. Stay tuned for the video that I'm, hopefully I'm gonna be able to get that thing finished tomorrow to cover in detail the 1.2.0, but for now, everything's looking good with 14.1.1 and 1.2.0, but I would still recommend holding off Again, it's still so new. I can't cover all these different models. With all the issues that happened so far, just hold off a little bit, just to make sure nothing else pops up, and then we can slowly get into the into the latest update. Plus, as we saw in this video, there's not even anything that's gonna be beneficial to your machine anyway that Apple even documented. So that's why I'm like, eh, let's hold off for a little bit. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores for the 14.1.1 update. We've got a single core on our 14.1 test of 2399 and a multi-core of 8757. And on 14.1.1, we've got a 2403 and an 8792 pretty much on target. Do I recommend installing the 14.1.1 update? Normally I do because there's reasons behind it, whether it's security based or fix base or improvements. But in this situation, no, because unless you have one of these Macs, the ProMotion 120 Hertz display that could be affected by that issue, I don't really recommend it because Apple hasn't given us any reason to do so other than a basic statement of, of bug fixes and security fixes which aren't even there. So why go through all that hassle to be able to do that if there's no known actual fixes for your system to be able to possibly even cause issues for your install, especially for unsupported Macs right now. So that's my recommendation. If you have one of these models here, the M1 or M2 MacBook Pro, I would recommend installing it because of that's what it might be meant for. Again, that's all I got going for it right now until we hear more information. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.